what's up sim fans, welcome to VR Simulation, dedicated to bringing you the latest news and reviews for all simulations in virtual reality. Hey, welcome back my friends to another episode of VR Simulation. This is Jeremiah, coming to you from Northern Japan, as always. Uh, this week uh, I want to talk about a few um, exciting in uh, announcements in the news. Uh, first off, iRacing's next build next week. Um, they're talking about our first implementation of Rift support. So that's really exciting. It'll be the very first racing simulator uh, on the marketplace available with official support for the Oculus Rift. So that's really cool. Uh, I also wanted to update you that I have been able to get uh, Vario Perception drivers working in both uh, F1 2011 as well as in Euro Truck Simulator 2 and uh, works quite well in both. Uh, Euro Truck Simulator 2 still needs a little bit of tweaking. Um, I haven't put a whole lot of time or effort into it, but um, it, it's functional, so that's good. Uh, this week, uh, what I really wanted to get into was a comparison between uh, 3D Vision Surround, which is the triple screen setup that I, was, that I have been using, and uh, the Oculus Rift, and pros and cons of the two. Um, so what I did was I set up the, the scenario where I was going to race uh, 10 laps at uh, the Autodrome circuit for the GT Challenge series uh, in a fixed setup. Uh, that way you can compare your laps times to me. I, again, I'm not the, the greatest race driver ever. Um, not as fast as the aliens out there for sure. Uh, but I, I like the GT series. Uh, I'm fairly comfortable in all three of these vehicles, the uh, Ford GT, the Corvette CR6, as well as the HPD ARC, ARX01C, uh, the Acura prototype car. Um, so I enjoy racing all three. So what I did is I did 10 laps with 3D Vision Surround in each of these vehicles at Autodrome. And then I went back and did 10 laps with the Oculus Rift in each of the three vehicles. So we're going to compare and contrast um, not only how it appears, let's get started with the Acura, but also uh, my lap times so we get an objective measure of uh, how well I did. Um, so starting off here in the Acura, uh, start off pretty even. And these uh, first couple of corners go pretty smoothly. Although I am going a little bit faster with the 3D vision surround. I think I just had a little bit better uh, approach to the corners. As you can see there, corner three went fairly well. The Accurate uses the paddle shifters, not my Derek Spears sequential shifter, uh, which I feel is a real benefit to the Rift. There, I, I missed the apex uh, on that last corner in the Rift, as you can see there. Got me a little bit behind. I was just having to go a little bit easier in the Rift uh, just to keep my bearings. Also, didn't go wide enough uh, setting up for that corner there, so definitely lost some time there. You can see now I'm, I'm trailing by almost a second already. A little bit slower through that last section. And coming back up to the finish line. As I mentioned last week, the biggest issue for me is not so much the resolution, although it definitely needs work. We know that they're going to fix that. So as you can see there, 3D Vision Surround uh, ended up with 135.739, and in the Oculus Rift, 136.096 which put me 1.715 seconds behind with the Oculus Rift. And into the Corvette CR6. Uh, so as I was mentioning, uh, resolution isn't the biggest issue for me. It's the jiggling of the, uh, of the Oculus Rift on my face combined with the lag of the positional sensors. So last week, this is what I was trying to get at and I was having a hard time articulate what exactly I was experiencing. But when the, when the Oculus Rift jiggles, because there's still, what, 50, 80 milliseconds, somewhere in that range, uh, uh, Palmer and the team over at Oculus, man, I, I totally missed that apex in the Oculus Rift there and went way off the track. Uh, this still ended up being my best lap, if that gives you an idea of uh, the struggle I was having in the Oculus Rift. I'm not going to 
uh, beat around the bush about it, it is uh, more challenging uh, to drive clean for me in the Oculus Rift. You can see here I'm already a, at least a second behind in the Oculus Rift. Definitely have to feather foot it a little bit more. But the combination of the jiggling with the lag uh, is very disorienting. And so um, whether it's the moment, the motion of the wheel and me struggling against the force feedback or shifting with my Derek Spears shifter, either way, those things cause the Oculus Rift to jiggle. Now, I think when they make a smaller uh, version, uh, like a five inch screen instead of a seven inch screen, that'll reduce weight. That'll probably bring it in closer to your face and that'll help reduce the jiggle. I think that's going to be a huge, uh, of huge importance and nobody's really talking about it. So there, the, in 3D Vision Surrounded, at a 135, 739 in the Corvette, in the Oculus Rift, a 136, 096, which put me 1.439 seconds behind when using the Oculus Rift. Uh, moving on to the Ford GT. Um, this is probably where I had the easiest amount of, uh, the easiest time. I think uh, I, I'm pretty smooth in the Ford overall. Um, although you can still see there, I got my tail out a little bit in corner one when wearing the Oculus Rift, but I was able to hold on to it, and that's important. I think uh, in the Oculus with the 4GT, in my 10 laps, I only spun out once. Coming up here on corner three, both cars, I'm able to uh, fairly do fairly well in the apex, although I do throw a, throw a, a tire off. I'm coming out of that corner in the Oculus Rift. I'm able to keep it a little bit cleaner in, in 3D Vision Surround. I'm able to hold a really tidy line on this section in, in both the Oculus Rift and the 3D Vision Surround. I think just the slower pace of the Ford um, helps you be a little bit smoother um, in the Oculus Rift. Maybe that's just a now see you get a little bit of wag there on the Oculus where I uh, was un unable to hold on to, or, or I should say I was trying to apex a little bit too soon, um, having a little bit of trouble gauging distance. I'm really hoping that the official build of um, iRacing with Oculus Rift support will help um, improve some of the downsides of the Oculus Rift and maybe uh, that'll help clean up some of the differences. Be a little bit more competitive in the Oculus Rift. Now, some of the guys on the on the iRacing forum are talking about uh, doing an all-rift race, which would be really cool. Those 3D Vision Surround, my time was 135, 739, and the Rift it was 136, 096, which means I only had a uh, 0.357 uh, seconds uh, deficit for the Oculus Rift, so I felt pretty good about that. Um, so this is a quick episode. I don't have a whole lot to talk about this week. I um, just wanted to show you that um, comparison uh, between the two, what I was using before. Um, you know, both both uh, solutions to me are very immersive. Um, the 3D vision, uh, the bezels almost disappear because when your eyes are overlapping, one eye can see behind this side of the bezel and the other eye behind that side of the bezel, so to speak. So um, the the 3D... Uh, does uh, help a lot with immersion I in both situations. It's easier to gauge distances and that sort of thing. Um, the biggest downside of the Rift, as I was saying before, is a combination of the resolution and the jiggle and lag of the head tracking. So the lag isn't too disorienting for going into corners and stuff like that. It's just fast enough so that um, it, it's not it's not vomit inducing for me. I don't know, some people complain about that, but for me it works fairly well. But when you get that jiggle from, from shifting your Derek Spears shifter or uh, even the, a, the H pattern shifter or struggling against the force feedback on the wheel, uh, any of those things are enough to offset um, the rift on my face, cause it to jiggle and that's disorienting. and, and, and and the effect means that you lose your focus and you can't see what's coming on the road. So uh, a lot of times as I was um, coming off of a long straight, especially going into corner one on that track, and I'm downshifting four times in a row, I'm blind almost. It's very difficult to keep any kind of focus on the road. And so I'm, I'm doing it purely from memory. 
I'm trying to turn it at the right spot and then after I'm done shifting and I come out of it I'm like am I in the right place or, or not so that's kind of what I was experiencing while in the rift 3d vision surround you're still able to look into corners um, because you know you've got I've got about a hundred and sixty degree field of view that's what I usually have iRacing racing set to when I'm using my triple screens and uh, the resolution so much better I can read the uh, corner markers um, way off um, where in the rift I could only see them right as they're about to pass me uh, that's how bad the resolution was so again I don't want to harp too much on resolution I realize that the oculus team is prioritizing that and that it's really important um, my concern is really the jiggle uh, because they haven't talked about that much and I'm, I'm concerned that um, it's on the back burner because people aren't talking about it so I'm going to talk about it. To me, it's a big issue, and uh, uh, hopefully getting the smaller rift, a lighter weight unit, will address that issue uh, enough so that it's, it becomes a non-issue. But until then, it's a big deal for me. So I'm excited for iRacing's uh, new build next week, and um, I, I still want to try to get uh, R-Factor 2 and Live for Speed working in the Vario Perception drivers. Uh, so far, I've been unsuccessful with those two titles. Again, I haven't had a whole lot of time to spend on it, but I'll be working on that more. But not for another month. I'm taking my family on vacation, so we will be out of the country for the next month or so. Um, so until late August, uh, keep racing, have fun, and uh, we'll talk to you then.